Okay, I'm down here. You're good. Let me know I'm alive. You're live. I'm live. Okay. Hi, everyone. Sorry, again, technical errors. I don't know why our whole setup, like we have this black magic encoder that is supposed to connect the laptop, the nicer camera, so I'll look lovely. And also, you know, you get a good quality, nice looking stream. Somehow it manages to always work when I have a Zoom meeting or a Hangout call, anything like that never works when uh, I have a live stream. If anyone knows how to make a black magic encoder work, now is the time. Actually, no, now is not the time because I just have to stop this stream and start a new one. Oh, Claudia is showing off our under counter lights. Welcome to our kitchen, by the way. Hello. How do you do? You'll see more of it on Friday because we have a video coming out in which we, for the first time, do a baking bad in our new kitchen. Don't think that means everything else is done because it's really, it's really not. But it's getting there. And that's the good thing. So this stream is actually for me to say thank you so much uh, for 750,000 subscribers, which is three quarters of a million, which is actually, it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot when you think about it, when you say it like that, it's a lot, yeah. So I'm gonna make dinner and we're gonna chat. It's like a ask me anything because I just gained 50,000 subscribers in 20 days, 17 days, actually yeah. 17 days. So there may be things that you want to know about me. Feel free to ask. I have some questions oh, to hello. start us off. Oh, okay. Oh, so I forgot to say that um, super chats today and super stickers, I've got post-it notes. Where have they gone? Very organized. I mean, I'm amazingly organized, okay? Oh my goodness. It's oh. just that thing didn't work. I mean, when one comes through, I just put a post-it note. So when one comes it. through, Claudia is going to write down the name of the person who gave a super chat or a super sticker and stick it, boom, on the kitchen. Okay. To celebrate the kitchen as well. <laughs> I love the kitchen. But yes, go ahead. So I have a question from Hazel. Hi, Hazel. What's your Buffy fan fit? Nah, I'm kidding. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? And this could be anything that seems like a superpower to you. Oh my goodness, wow. Okay, well first of all, no, you'll never find out the name of any of my uh, Buffy fanfic. I don't even fanfic. know. <laughs> <laughs> tell me. No, sorry, sorry. That's something that uh, will be revealed upon my death and not before. It'll be like in your will, like, if I'm still, <laughs> I'm still around, like you have rights to all my fan fictions and I'll be like millions. Here are so my five like, embarrassing five, screen okay. names. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you secretly still write them. Maybe I do. Maybe yeah. I when do. When you're like, I'm going to go play Sims, I'm like, okay, you're actually like, <laughs> Yeah, if you're ever like, I wonder why so many Buffy and Faith fanfics are still being uploaded. Now you know why. Anyway, back to the question. Sorry, the question. Um, if I had a superpower, what would it be? Um, clarity of thought. Is that really boring? Yeah. Oh, that's really boring. Okay. Well, the thing is, right, if, if we were all X-Men, if mutants existed in the world, not if we were all X-Men, but if there were mutants in the world, I would obviously go for Rogue's powers, mm. because surely she's, like, the best, right? Well, I thought she take from everyone else. I thought Jessica last night that, because she was like, oh, I used to, like, scream as a child, as a baby, when there were too many loud noises. I was like, that's really interesting. Maybe you had such a cute sense of hearing, and it was just too much sensory overload, that you basically, like, basically your brain rewired to tune out noise to such an extreme that now you obviously are deaf. And maybe you had such good visual acuity that it was too much as well. So your brain was like, right, we're just gonna get rid of one eye. So I was like, really, the world just wasn't ready for you. Yes, but then I pointed out that in the movies, there would always be a moment where I would touch the mystical totem, whatever it happens to be. I don't think it's gonna be touch shaker. Or... Boom! and all of my superpowers would come rushing back to me and I would be wearing a cape and my entire superhero outfit. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying that's how it happens. Capes only needs to come. Maybe you just get like a glow. Because how would I fly without my cape, Claudia? We 
Okay, well, I mean, it's very important. You weren't able to fly before, sure. you literally just had two eyes and you could get it. <laughs> I mean, you don't know. I don't know. You don't know for sure. You didn't know me. You were like a baby. levitating baby. Yeah, yeah. I, and no one can tell me otherwise. That okay, so the clarity of thought is your superpower. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Mine would be not, not being disabled. I've always said, like, I'd like to be able to read people's thoughts. But I don't know if that would be, oh. I want to like turn it off and on. I would yeah. want to like hear it all the time. Would you actually want to read people's thoughts though? Oh, I, well, why not? Well, because I worry. would you find out? Well, I worry too much about what people think of me. So I'd be able to like not worry so much <laughs> or but, I'd be proven right. No, but you're only going to find out that either they dislike you which, in which case I will not upset you and you didn't need to know. No, and then in which case I'll give them no time of day. Sure. Okay, well, that would never bother you after. Well, not if you got used to your superpower. You <laughs> <know who laughs> like not know. if you got used to coming across people who were like, nah, not keen on you. Yeah. Also, you could steal, oh, really like you could steal people's ideas. <gasps> you could um, stop people committing crimes. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's a better okay, that's one than stealing someone's ideas. You could, um, you know, uh, yeah, like cheat in exams, but no one would know you're cheating. You could just be like, how would you know it's the right answer though? Oh, if you're still in the you're exam sorry. room, <laughs> if you're in an exam room and there are 200 people, well, you go for general consensus. You'd have to go around really quickly and be like, okay, 70% of this room is option A. I probably think it's option A. Although Samantha is really clever and she's gone for B. Yeah, I think we should go for Samantha's ideas. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> next question is yeah. from Alison. Congratulations, Jessica. Thanks, Alison. As a fellow chronic pain sufferer. Also, we, we have no way to see what's actually going on in the chat. I will show you. turn that around. I'll do it in a minute. Or not. Okay, fine. If you were given a free pass for the day with no pain and no consequences for what you ate or did all day, how would you live it? What would you love to eat or do? I'd eat a croissant. That, yeah, I'd eat a croissant. It would be great. Um, I would go for a run. I keep saying this to Claudia and she's like, running's not that great. I'm like, running seems pretty great when you can't do it. So yeah, I think I'd like to go for a run. I want to do something super energetic, like get that feeling where everyone in the movies runs and then they're like, ah, pumped. That's the feeling that I want to get, pumped feeling. Yes, and I eat croissant. What else would I like to eat? Whippy ice cream. Yes, from an ice cream truck. They're like, ooh, whippy ice cream. Like I know it's, my parents told me when I was a child that it was all whale blubber, and I, I don't think that's true anymore. What's a super chat look like? What's a super chat look like? Oh, you're so sweet. Okay, one second. Is it that? Yes, darling, those things along the top. What about this one? So that's also, yeah, they're just different colours. Anything that comes up in a different colour. <laughs> okay. Do you want to, do you want to like turn it around so I can see and tell you? Honestly. Claudia and the internet, it's a, it's a difficult relationship. They're partially estranged. You okay? We're doing it. It's okay, it's turning. It's turning. Look at that cable. There we go. <laughs> Hello, people. Welcome to the stream where I'm going to cook dinner and we're going to do like a ask me anything for all our new peeps. Hi, oh, new people. Know. Yeah, so you can you can move the laptop over here. <laughs> like I originally said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, no, oh, this out. we'll see. It's okay. If you slide it, slide it. Let's find out the next question. Was that a good enough answer, by the way? Croissants, running. I think there's maybe some other stuff. What other stuff do I think of that I've now forgotten? That I would really love to do. Better memory. <laughs> Dear Lord, decent apologies, everyone, for that. My goodness. Uh, yeah, that was balancing quite clearly. Okay, I'm just going to stop moving. It's it. we, we had a whole setup and then it, it kind of didn't. Let me hold that. I'm here. All right. Move it, move it. There we go. Okay. 
Damn, nothing happened. You saw nothing. I deeply apologize, everyone there. I think, are we still? <laughs> are we still rolling? We're still rolling. It's yeah. okay. Yes. And Claudia's going to get on top of those super chats, she says. Okay, next question. Oh, this is a really interesting one, actually. This is from Emily. Hi, Emily. She says, I'm quite surprised that the vintage clothing you love to wear and look absolutely beautiful wearing, thank you, Emily, uh, doesn't drive you nuts, giving you chronic pain. Between the binding of typical 50s and 40s era clothing and the itchy undercoats needed, is this just a we have to suffer for beauty thing or have you taught yourself to simply oh, ignore it over the years? No, no, you can just write someone's name. Oh, it's very complicated. <laughs> It's very complicated writing names. I've got a bit much. Um, interesting. Or do your does your nerve related condition dull irritation to these things? That's a really good question. I actually find the way that I dress very comfortable. I know that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense for most people. They probably think that this is quite constricting. Um, I think because I have a scoliosis and it's especially difficult for my lower back it really helps me to have a lot of pressure in this region. And it kind of takes the weight off my flat bit here. If you saw my, uh, if you saw my corsets video that just came out recently, I'm going to show you a bit more about how this side is very... I'm not sure what's happening, but something's happening. So this side goes in quite a lot, and then this side's very straight down. And that just puts a lot of pressure on this big muscly bit right here. So yeah, having it all kind of scooped in, scooped in, like that sort of thing, uh, really is actually quite helpful for me. Although obviously everyone is different. I don't know how other people feel. Oh, and when it comes to petticoats, yes, I do absolutely cannot abide by really stiff petticoats. Um, you know, the netting that's quite like, um, there's a word that I'm, I'm thinking of that I've forgotten. I want to say sharp, but the word isn't sharp. Anyway, the type of crinoline type, but highly recommend uh, these petticoats, which from Doris Designs, they're incredibly soft and also really quite big. Like this is just one petticoat right here. Look at that. Please enjoy my massive petticoat. But yeah, that's just one petticoat, and um, and they're very very soft these ones. So it's all about finding the right thing, I think is the answer. These dresses as well. This is from the Pretty Dress Company, and it's really deceptively easy to wear. I find these ones because you can really they're a bit stretchy, you can move around in them. Definitely when it comes to scoliosis, things that are made to be quite symmetrical and with quite tough fabric are very difficult to wear um, just because I can't <laughs> do up a zip but any little bit of stretch is always good for bendy bodies or bodies that are a little bit different I find okay any questions coming from the super chat Claudia yes <gasps> yes oh well done thank you okay we've got loser png okay loser png how to cope with nausea? Well, um, I have a video about nausea that I made many moons ago, and some of the things are still quite similar. Especially, I'm gonna really root for diet ginger. Any kind of ginger beer, uh, fizzy ginger flavored thing, it's excellent, especially if you let it, what's that word? where it's bubbly and then it's not. Flat. Thank you. These are the bits that you miss from videos because I cut them out. <laughs> I'm like, ah, wording. Words are hard. Who knows? Who knows? Yes. And then eventually I, I reach a word. So yeah, flat ginger, excellent. One of my old favorites that I don't need to do anymore is Sugar-Free Words Originals with Gaviscon. Gaviscon is like a calming stomach thing. All right, then. The pen is really bad. The pen is gone. Okay, go. 
any sign of fail after fail. <laughs> it's fail after fail. I mean, that's everything we do, really. Oh, uh, yeah. I think we're like the least put together people. We seem like we, we should be. We're not. I try to be. I'm not. It, it's not, not how my life goes. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's two tips on nausea there. What else do I do for help my nausea? Diet Coke. Diet Coke, of course, of course. Diet Coke is one of the best things for me. I feel very, very sick. I have some nice cold Diet Coke, especially the 500 ml uh, bottles. They're the best ones, for sure. For your nausea, they're the best, but they have to be chilled. Warm Coke does not do the trick. It does not do the trick. And it actually works because the sweetener in it makes you feel a bit sick. So then they have to add an antiemetic, <laughs> which stops you feeling sick and works better than any antiemetic I have come across so far. So there's that. So thank you very much for the question and the super chat. Um, oh, we have one up here from It's Already Rendered, which says, do you exercise? And I've actually vaguely started exercising, vaguely. Um, I am, I think you can tell by looking at me, not the strongest noodle. Like, I, uh, I try to lift stuff and it, I just, just the arm comes off. It just, it just pops out. But, and then it's, it's done for. So I really want to build up my muscle in the hope that that will then help my arms actually stay attached to my body. Seems like a useful thing. And make my hands a bit stronger, um, make my legs a bit stronger, see if, if there's anything I can do incrementally to build up some kind of stamina. And I have been seeing a PT uh, twice a week. And we've been doing some very gentle stuff, but also learning what really doesn't work. Like I lost a whole weekend a few weekends ago because we did one like kind of stretch where I was lying on the floor holding very, very light weight. I don't hold the heavyweights. I hold the, the ridiculously small one that like a toddler could lift. And lifting up towards the ceiling and doing that apparently did something awful to my neck. <laughs> yeah, excuse me, Claudia's just a little guest star. Uh, that did something awful to my neck. And then boom, uh, that was migraine city for a whole weekend. So don't recommend that. But I'm trying to work out what does work. And then I'm gonna make a video and just be like, hey, this is what worked for me. If you are also a limp noodle, maybe try. Maybe it will work for you. Um, but it's very much not about doing anything that would get me breathless or do anything that could count as cardio. It's more the kind of, it's not like bodybuilder weightlifting. Bodybuilder weightlifting for toddlers. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. But hopefully it's going to be a good thing. Let's see. Um, Emily Broderick. Hi, Emily. Thanks so much. Says, do you have comfy rugs when you need to lie on the floor? Well, huh? Oh, sorry. She said, do we have comfy rugs when I need to lie on the floor? And the answer is, not at the moment. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, everything's been taken up. Um, we do have carpet upstairs, which is a delight. In our old house, we didn't actually have carpet except for on the stairs. So we had a lot of rugs. But now, blissfully, we have carpet. And I'm currently using the upstairs, one of the guest bedroom upstairs, as my office because my office is building site, as most of downstairs is everywhere except this tiny corner that you can see that looks good right now. Everywhere else is a building site, not looking its best. But yes, we are then going to get lots of lovely rugs to lie down and feel blissfully happy. I'm gonna chop some sausage. Whilst I answer the next question, which is, I think I should actually wait, take this down so I don't get confused. Uh, Johanna Rodriguez, will you have plus size t-shirts in your merch? Excellent, excellent.
excellent question. I am actually in the process of transitioning my merch away from the company that I currently have it with. Oh my God, and I spoke about this at the start of the year and then 2020 just like smacked this plan down. But we're getting there, we're getting there. So I wanna make sure that my merch is as inclusive as it possibly can be. And I haven't yet found a merch company that does clothing that is as large a size range as I would like it to be. So instead I'm gonna start making my merch into things that everybody can wear and everybody can use. And it's not so much about attire what we're going to be working on. Um, so there will be a much more inclusive range of things coming very soon. And I'm really excited about it because I love designing things. I love, oh, I just love little, I love little stuff. Anyway, I, I can't really tell you too much, but I'm very pleased. I'm very excited. And it's things that I will be wearing. You'll see it a lot in almost every video. This is a hint. Don't know if that was a helpful hint, but it's a hint. There we go. Um, oh, Rosario says, what is your favorite low energy recipe? I have recently been diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Well, Rosario, first of all, congratulations on getting a diagnosis. Uh, I think we all know that the path to diagnosis is never generally smooth. So congratulations. I'm very happy that you have that. And I think diagnosis is so great because they give us a, a jumping point where we can start to see what it is that we need. We can get an access to a wealth of information from people who have the same condition. Uh, it's one of the best things about being a diagnosis is that you're able to say, oh, I have this thing. You have that thing. What worked for you? And then try it yourself. Because otherwise it feels so much like you're just kind of wandering blindly in the forest. More desert, I guess. My absolute favorite low energy recipe um, is what I call my, my microwave rice pudding. It's not really rice pudding. Basically, I get some microwavable rice, like a little microwavable rice packet. I know, I know, don't judge me, but it's a low energy recipe. So heat that up in the microwave, pop it into a bowl, add in two eggs, and some uh, artificial sweetener, give them a little mix, and depending on how, this isn't a good word, but depending on how sloppy you would like your rice pudding to be, add a little bit of yogurt. Uh, I use soy yogurt, just kind of up to the, well, you'll learn from experience, because then you pop it into the microwave for two minutes, and it comes out with a kind of stodgy, sticky, gooey, good mess, it's excellent. And then I put some sugar-free jam on top and honestly, it's delicious. Absolutely love it. And it's so soft on my stomach because quite often my energy levels on my stomach are really tied in together. If I'm exhausted, I'm gonna have issues eating and keeping my food down because my body's just like, no, I'm too tired to process food. Oh, oh. But then, of course, it needs that food. It needs that energy. My body's just being very unhelpful. So it's one of those recipes that's really easy to keep down, really soft on your stomach, easy to digest. And then it kind of helps you the next day try some perhaps more challenging food. So, yeah, that's my favorite low-energy recipe. And you kind of spice it up, add some fresh berries if you have them lying around. If you wanna chop up some strawberries or something nice like that, you can do that and that's lovely. So thank you very much for that question. Next question. Oh, God, there are so many good ones. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Ah, okay, let's see. Uh, this kind of goes to the earlier question. So this is from Ciara, Ciara Brown. Do you pronounce that Ciara? Yeah. Ciara Brown, how do you keep in shape slash stamina wise? I'm having foot surgeries and I will be in a wheelchair for a year. Oh, wow. 
Well, I hope wishing you all of the best with your surgeries. I hope that, that goes very well for you. Um, in terms of being able to do any kind of exercising or stamina when you can't get up and move around too much, I had a series of exercises that I would do every day in bed when I was really at my bed bound. Couldn't, uh, I had a lumbar puncture that went wrong, which meant that I couldn't lift my head above my body. So I had to keep my head completely flat, but I was able to move my, I was able to move my legs, but not my arms, because my arms had paralyzed themselves. That was a fun, that was a fun year. And so what I would do is I'd lie in bed and just lift my legs up and down each, uh, I think five times was about the limit I could do. And then out to the side each way. Um, and then I'd turn over onto my side lift leg, turn onto my front, lift up and down 10 times, then to the other side. And genuinely going just through that routine um, was a lot. And that was my full on exercise routine for the day. And but it did, I think, really help just doing a little bit each day, keep up the muscle tone in my leg, which did, to be honest, waste a lot, but I think would have been a lot worse. And my occupational therapist said that it was it was a helpful and good thing to do. So that's what I would recommend. Um, there are also, I mean, I don't know if that, I think when I read the study on this, the evidence wasn't quite in on it, but uh, I did read a good study that was about breathing exercises and that having an effect on your stamina. So in the same way that doing yoga and controlling your breathing can be uh, very helpful for calming your nervous system, you can also use your breathing to kind of activate your nervous system. Um, and so getting breathless, even intentionally, can trick your body into releasing certain chemicals that you then use to bump up your stamina. So that, yeah, that was interesting. But yes, the, the leg lifts and then probably doing the same things with your arms if you're able to was for me very helpful. And I hope that helps you. And again, good wishes with your leg surgery. I think. So I'm just, I'm just a, I'm just a computer, did we break up? No, we oh, did we break up? No. No. <laughs> Sorry, no, hi, still, still married, still together. Everything's fine, don't worry. I'm just, Writing down the super chat thing. Well, it's just an extreme. Imagine if we broke up and I'm just still here. Like, <laughs> I know, we'd be like, darling, I know we're getting a divorce. Would you mind? <laughs> <laughs> just coming over and helping. Excuse me, I'll stop watching the chicken sausage. Do you want to nibble a bonus as well? Nah, I'm alright. Hello. Oh, I just. Oh, I've broken it. Oh, that made me sad. No. No, 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 she's in it for life. All right. I love the smell of chicken body. Okay, next question. Ooh. Okay, Jed Quinn, do you lip read some accents easier, i.e. Bristolian, because you're from the West? Uh, yes, there are definitely some accents that it is easier to read. There are definitely some people that it's incredibly hard to read. I <laughs> see, I grew up in Bristol from the ages of eight, I think, eight to 20. Um, she's going to say vaguely, misremembering her own life. And I didn't really know that many people with a strong Bristolian accent, I don't think. Or if I did, it was just kind of their voice. Um, no, yeah, I'm trying to think of, yeah, and then whenever I meet people and say I'm from Bristol, they're like, you don't sound like it at all. I know, I'm sorry. Uh, there are some words there. There are some kind of specifically Bristolian phrases that I can only understand in a Bristol accent, like lover and Gert Lash. I can only understand that in a Bristolian accent. If someone else says it in a different accent, I'm like, I, what? What are these words? Are these words? What are you saying to me? Is this speaking? I don't understand it. I don't get it at all. I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, so definitely other accents. I did meet, I don't know, I'm not going to, you know, tar everyone with the same brush here, but I did once meet a man from Chile who didn't move his lips while speaking. But literally did not move his lips while speaking. His mouth was just open. And I don't know whether that, I mean, that's the only person I think I've ever met from Chile. I doubt everyone from Chile speaks like that, though. They probably knew their lips. Um, things that are hard, I mean, Scottish? Scottish accents are a little more difficult. Yeah. It is a, the funny thing is, some people, like Clara, for instance, has what some people would consider to be quite a, I don't know, you say she had a thick Spanish accent? Claudia? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> she has a, a thick Spanish accent, apparently. Um, but I can understand her because she, because I'm just so used to seeing her face. So with a lot of people, it's more my familiarity to them as opposed to their specific accent. Oh, also, we need to be saying hello to our new members. I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, darling. Yes. Lots well, of small questions. You just rattle right. on about the same one. All right, all right. Next one. I'm still taking that one. Ooh, Apple Sap. Which language would you most like to learn how to read? I'm a literature major. <gasps> oh, which language would it be most? Oh, Chinese. Uh, possibly because that's the hardest. I, well, probably not the hardest. Um, yeah, I'd really like to be able to read a language that is completely different to English. I went to school with a boy who taught himself to be taught himself to read Japanese using just books. I thought that was rather impressive. So yeah, that would be good. I'd also quite like to learn to read Spanish because I have a number of lovely subscribers who speak Spanish and leave me messages in Spanish and I don't know what they say. But I get Clara to translate them. But of course soon, Clara will be leaving us. Just that we're gonna have to find a new Clara um, which is a bit was a mission I have been on this month, finding a new Clara. We found a lovely girl. She's very nice. She'll be starting halfway through next month and have a bit of a crash course in everything that Clara does. And hopefully it should all turn out very well. It's a, it's very scary losing losing Clara. I'm gonna miss her a lot um, because obviously we work together. But we're also really good friends. So it will be sad. But she's moving back to Spain, which is going to be amazing and means we get to go and visit her in yeah. Spain, where it will be sunny and delightful. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm going. Okay. Uh, I'll take down a number of them. Uh, oh, Tommy just said hi with a waving lemon emoji. Hi, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Then we've got. Does that say Avra? Yeah, Avra. 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 A V R U H. Okay, Avra. That's a very interesting, nice name. CFS sufferer. Do you do anything to help fatigue or have anything to help? The number one thing that I think is important uh, when you suffer from fatigue has just got to be pacing which is such a boring answer. I realize it's the one that all the doctors tell you. But when I say pacing, I in no way mean gradated exercise. That's a whole different issue. By pacing, I mean uh, making sure that you're not expending too much of your energy, making sure that when you go to sleep in the evening, there's always that extra spoon, there's a little bit left in the pot, because for people who don't suffer from energy problems, they can use sleep, they can use a whole night to regain energy. But unless we have a little bit left in the pot, thank you, baby, we are unable to have our bodies do that, and then we wake up just as tired as when we went to sleep, most unfortunately. So yeah, it sounds silly, um, it sounds a bit obvious, I guess, but getting into a really good 
bedtime routine, the routine that they tell you to have when you have a newborn, like teach yourself like you're a newborn, do the whole thing, maybe a little bit, <laughs> calm down, read yourself a story, have a bath. I mean, if you can have a bath, because Jesus, baths take a lot of energy, and um, I take fewer baths than I should. Okay. Uh, you didn't need to know that. Do, 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 do. Right. Hannah S. How did you get birth? How did you get? I can help you. How did you get your? How did you get today's curls? <laughs> My grandma wore three petticoats when dancing. Thanks, thanks. Glad you like my curls. To tell you the truth, they're not mine. <laughs> uh, yes, this, I'm pleased that you can't tell, but this is actually a wig that I have purchased for occasions where I either had a migraine or was absolutely too exhausted to do my hair, but still want to have nice hair. It looks really good, basically, the person styled it to look exactly like how Jessica styles her hair. Yeah, I sent her a photo of my hair. <laughs> and it's like, great, because some days, you know, it's just like, it's just too much effort. So anyway, I was surprised you shared that little secret. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Open and honest, transparency. Also, my grandma wore three petticoats when dancing. Excellent. Good choices. I have been known to do a, uh, the petticoat doubling up trick. I went through one stage of wearing three petticoats and then I discovered that I could buy bigger petticoats and uh, just have one thing. And that really revolutionized the game for me. Right, Crafty, any tips for disabled lesbians to meet women? Um, well, let's see. I went on like 70 first dates before I met the love of my life over here. And I would say the very first thing, hi. <laughs> and one thing that I personally think is really important when you're dating as a disabled person is get to a nice, you know, conversation, blah, 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 but make sure that the person knows that you have a disability. You don't have to disclose exactly the extent to which it affects you don't feel like you have to be like, oh, my worst day, this, 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 and this happens. Just, you know, slowly get, just slide it in there, just a little bit at a time, because you need to make sure that that person is able to cope with the idea even. Um, and just to me, I found after a few times where I was like, oh, no, I'll tell them on the first date. Yeah, we'll have a great little like online chat and then I'll meet on the first date and then I'll tell them. I just found that I wasted all my time and energy getting, looking, you know, doing my makeup, getting my hair done, wearing a nice dress, going to the date. I was on my, you know, form, got to be all chappy, chappy, and I'm using up essentially my one time in the weekend that I'm able to leave the house on a date where someone at the end was like, Oh yeah, no, I can't actually. Uh, I can't actually handle that right now. And I'm like, oh, well, right, okay, well. But then I found once I started putting it in my profile, or if I started to talk to someone before we went on the date, the ones who said, oh no, actually, uh, that's a bit much, or just kind of ghosted me, well, I, I saved time going on that date, and then the ones who were like oh, okay, cool, or I have a friend who has kind of a similar thing, or, oh, yeah, well, actually, I myself have blah, blah, blah. And then we go on the date, and the date would be more about whether we actually connected as human beings. So I always, yeah, I always think it's a good policy to go in being honest, not too honest, not too honest. They don't know, need to know all the really bad stuff, just a little bit, just being a little bit honest because it's really you that it's saving your time and your fun rather than, you know, the alternative, which never feels fun. You feel like you had a great date. And at the end, they're like, hi, are you? And then you never see them again. Although, of course, they could have been ghosting me just because, just because. <laughs> Who knows? Um, 
Mm -mm. Okay, we have got Lost in Pencils. Good name. Lost in Pencils, I like it. Has any... <laughs> I can help you. Uh, has any animation been so good that you could lip read them? Oh, wow. Not that I am aware of. If you guys know of animation is so amazing that you can lip read them, let me know. Goodness. I'm trying to think. Oh, no, wasn't there a time? Wasn't there? We were watching Tangled. Yeah. And he said something, and the subtitle said something different. Was that Tangled? I don't know. Watching? Okay, thanks. <laughs> She's like, I did what not pay that much attention. Amazing. Yeah, maybe there's a moment in Tangled. But yeah, generally animation, I mean, with human beings, I get lip reading is probably 30%. It's much easier to do words like yes and no, very common words, but generally it's it's about 30% of words that you can lip read on a human, and then um, animation does not make that any easier. All right, hello. Oh, footnote guy, I am blind and often see blurry arm movements in your videos. Do you sign in them? In my earlier videos, yes, I do sign. Um, I stopped doing it about maybe two years ago. I think when my channel kind of took off a bit more because I was getting more of an international audience. So where I've been signing um, in SSE before, because that's English sign language or British sign language, that was uh, understandable to the part of my audience that signed. But then when I had a more international audience, I had people who used American sign language or Spanish sign language who'd be like, this is just really confusing for me. I don't understand. And the it seemed to be confusing people more than it was helping. So now I don't sign in videos, but I yeah, but I still try, I still move up, my hands still move around because they want to. <laughs> they like the idea of it. Sorry, I'm going, I'm going. All right. Okay, eight wheeled racer. What is the best way? Sorry, I can't. I, what is handwriting is a little difficult for me. I read it. What? What is the best way to what ensure? Is, the best way to ensure being reconsulted by your GP if their diagnosis is not correct. Okay. What is the best way to get um, re-diagnosed through your GP? Haha. <laughs> well, I wish I could tell you. Um, I needed to go through my GP to get re-diagnosed and get access to the rheumatology service. Unfortunately, my GP was not super helpful and I had to go private to just to get that one consultation where I could get the diagnosis and then come back to my GP and say, look, here it is, now give me access to the services that I need. However, um, I would recommend for future reference changing GPs. Because I did that, and actually, I did it within the same surgery, and the new GP is amazing. He's great. He's really helpful. Uh, he was, I mean, I came to him, and I said, look, this, your previous GP said I couldn't have access to this service, but I've gone and got this new diagnosis, and, I, you know, I had to go outside the NHS to get it, and he's like, I'm so sorry about that. Let me help you. Sign me up for um physiotherapy and whatnot to try and get my jaw fixed, which is good. Have I said about my jaw yet? I'm not sure if I've said about my jaw. I must have done. But I said on Instagram, uh, I'm getting my jaw fixed, guys. Yeah, yeah. Party, party. This is where you put, like, party emojis. Party, party. <laughs> I'm very excited by this because my jaw is one of the things that have been giving me a lot of trouble recently, and I just want it done because eating is a problem and that's something I kind of need to live is the ability to eat um, but what's happened to my face is that one side of my face the muscle has become super strong and the other side has become very weak and because of that it kind of subluxes so my jaw semi dislocates 
when I eat, which you don't need. You just don't That's need. Right. And it's very painful. Thank you for the emojis. Excellent. Good job. Oh, lots of tillies. Ah, oh, I love the customer emojis as well. If you're a member of the Kelvin Fraser Art Club, oh yeah, you can become a member of the Kelvin Fraser Art Club uh, by clicking the join button. If you're a member, you get access to custom emojis, including Tilly's very excited little hands and face. Uh, wait, I have my hand. So yes, I'm getting Botox in the extra strong side of my jaw. Good stuff. Angela Gallant, will Claudiette end the live stream once she gets too hungry? <laughs> yes. Yes, she will. She'll eventually pull the plug. I'm <laughs> like, done. No more. Put some food in this walk. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I can't do questions without making a proof. Right. Uh, I thought I could. I was wrong. Yandalito says, subscriber of four years. Wow, amazing. I'm very impressed with that. Hi, welcome. Glad to have had you around the whole time. Um, I know my YouTube channel says that I've been here since 2011, but I haven't really. I mainly just watched uh, Buffy and Faith fan vids. Then, yeah, I know. The show finished in 2003. Don't judge me. Yeah, Jenny Toast. Trevor Foy, you've helped me through some hard times in uni where I haven't been heard. Well, thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you for being here for such a long time. It's lovely, lovely to have you guys around. Catherine with a K, any advice on starting a YouTube channel? <gasps> yes, oh my goodness. I love doing this, I love doing YouTube stuff. Um, so my best advice when it comes to starting a YouTube channel is to do something that you love. I know that's such a boring piece of advice. Everyone gives the same piece of advice, but you spend so much time. Like YouTube is my full-time job. I do probably 60 hours a week making content and things on both YouTube and Instagram. And I put my whole heart and soul into it. And it really, if it's not a topic that you love, boy, are you gonna hate it. So make sure it's a topic that you love. Don't necessarily worry too much about finding uh, an area of YouTube that you fit in or that you're interested in. Go with what you find fun and your niche because you'll find other people. Like the internet is such a huge space. People who are interested in your thing will find you. You don't have to um, mold yourself into anybody else other than the wonderful person you are. Yeah. All oh, right. Nin Min N T. No. Nin Min T M. I'm very dyslexic. What's the best way to learn SSE? Is it hard to push yourself in a wheelchair? New member last week. <gasps> Way! Welcome to the Calvin Face Art Club. Congratulations on joining. Um, what's the best way to learn SSE? Is it like being a wheelchair? Ah, is it hard to push yourself in a wheelchair? Yes, uh, depending on where we are. I really prefer, if we're in somewhere like a shopping centre, being in my manual wheelchair because I can make such tiny little adjustments and movements and it's much more, um, what's, when you know something, it does well in your brain to your hand? Uh, coordinate. It's very... Coordinate. Not the word. Responsive. Yeah, the thing where you know something, intuitive. It's very intuitive um, using a manual wheelchair because it's more about your body. Whereas I find when we're out and about, like on a dog walk, using the electric wheelchair, much easier because we've got that power to go up hills and down hills. And also, I always damage my fingers going downhill on a manual wheelchair because I'm like, ooh, 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 using my hands as the brakes. And then crushing it. Okay, Catherine O'Ryan. Hey, Catherine. So I, I have EDS and thought of your video where I was misdiagnosed. What has changed since your diagnosis? What has changed since my diagnosis? Um, I think the biggest thing for me has been the ease of accessing the services that I needed and people actually knowing something 
about the thing I have. So I was previously diagnosed with MCTD, mixed connective tissue disorder, which is quite a rare um, autoimmune and connective tissue thing. So I would tell people, even doctors, what I had, and they'd be like, oh, huh? And it was a bit harder for them to understand how it affected my body. Whereas when I just said, oh, I have EDS, most doctors are like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, we, we, we did that in, uh, in university. I'm like, yeah, excellent, good stuff. That's probably the biggest thing that has changed for me. And being able to gain advice from people online who are like, I have EDS and this thing worked for me. That's a pretty good one. Right, then we've got, oh, new members. Hi, Queen of Troy, Fliv Flibby, Miss Amanda Jones, and Small Little Isaac. Hi, welcome to the Calvin Fraser Club. You guys now have access to the behind the scenes weekenders videos which you are able to find if you go to my channel and you go to playlists. You'll now be able to see that playlist where you weren't before. If you're logged on as a member, you remember things, you can see it. And it has about two years of behind the scenes videos that Claudia and I have made, which is very exciting. The last few months we've been doing kind of quite different stuff because we've been in lockdown, but excited to get back to vlogging. There'll be a lot of vlogging coming up soon, obviously, because we've got Vlogmas. Yeah, I know. I've already planned for this. I'm very excited by it. And it's still August. I, what can I say? I'm a Christmas girl. Uh, I actually love fall. Fall is my favorite season. All right. Hannah Rodriguez. I'm, wait, did I already read this? I don't remember. I'm losing my hearing. What signs do you recommend I should learn first? Ooh, the very first thing I think you should learn is the alphabet. I know. Because... If you don't know the sign for something, spell it out. And then people uh, who are able to sign will be able to pick up your finger spelling. It's a lot harder to recognize what someone else is. If someone's like a native uh, signer and they finger spell something, it is so fast. I'm always just like, ah, oh, could you do that? But at one tenth of the speed, thank you. Woof. So yeah. Have a really good understanding of the alphabet and a really good understanding of it backwards. Do, 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 do. Right. Hello. Oh, uh, Miss Nomi Gusta. What is it? Yeah. Okay. It says Miss Nomi Gusta, I think, asked. YA fiction on invisible disabilities and LGBTQ question mark question mark. I'm assuming that's asking, am I writing? Will you write? Yeah, I'm going to talk about Yes, very much so. I am currently working with a literary agent on a non-fiction book because it has been advised that I do that first because apparently that's uh, more palatable to publishers because I've not published before. So five minutes, five minutes, says my wife, and then she gets hangry. Okay, I better answer all these questions in five minutes. Um, yes, so that will be coming soon. I will be doing a non-fiction book first, which is not a memoir. It's um, more in the vein of LGBTQ plus history. And then lots of exciting fiction books involving Invisible disability, LGBTQ, just, you know, representation, but not for the sake of representation. They'll be going on adventures and doing fun stuff. They just happen to be disabled, gay, both, or questioning their gender. Any. I just, yes. Good representation needed. Okay, it's already rendered. Have you tried to do voiceover work? Um, yeah, well, I did a voiceover for an advert once. But yes, I know. Maybe that's something I should look into. I quite like the idea of doing audio books. Um, just because I like the idea of reading people to sleep. It makes me happy. Okay, Jenna Kirk, have you watched Winona Up? It's like modern Western lesbian demon hunting Buffy. My God. Can we watch it? <laughs> All right, wife, there you go. <laughs> Keep that one. We'll be watching that. Uh, yeah, I, I am aware of Winona Up. I just don't know how to watch it and what platform it's on. You can look that up. 
We have Sky now, so maybe. Uh, Samantha Lomas, how do you adjust? How, oh, how do you adjust to braces? Like body, okay, sorry. I was like, braces? I, I have this three I have to wear daily, hip, shoulder, elbow, crutch, chair. I look like I've been in a crash. All right, is that how do you adjust emotionally? How do you adjust physically? I'm guessing emotionally and to other people and to other people's opinions, which is always, uh, always fun. I went through two years of wearing wrist splints. And to start with, everyone around me was like, I'm going to get you these beautiful gloves, Jessica. It's on Netflix. These lovely, oh, it's on Netflix. All right, we'll be watching that then. Uh, long sleeved things, and everyone's like, here, we'll help you cover them up. And what I eventually realized was that actually all I was doing in covering them up was helping other people feel better. And it was actually more difficult for me to use my hands and to move around. And what I learned was that I wanted to push up all of my sleeves, no gloves, nothing, just my wrist splints, and, uh, and wear them quite proudly because they were genuinely very, very helpful to me. So I think um, look at things like AIDS for the benefits that they can bring you. It's always difficult when you first start using a wheelchair and you're not used to it and used to the way people look at you. But if you think about it as it's actually a great thing that helps you run. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, why? It's happening. It's happening. I'm answering. One is for me. What? One is for Claudia. <gasps> for Claudia from Krista Miles. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm ready She's here. Her She's here. For Claudia. Chronic pain. I'm nervous about dental. And they said, yeah, I can write abbreviated to better. <laughs> she has chronic pain and they're nervous about dental treatment due to chance of nerve damage. Any tips? Ah, go for it. I would say go to a good dentist that's not going to like drill into your nerves. Right. I mean, you're not going to get nerve damage from dental treatment generally. Um, like a filling uh, isn't going to cause nerve damage because if they're if it's deep enough into the tooth that the nerve is affected, it becomes a root canal treatment, which is not going to affect the rest of your, you know, systemic nervous body. System. Yeah, your nerves are almost your the nerves in your teeth are kind of quite an isolated thing to, uh, you know, your facial nerves and the nerves in your body. So you know, if one nerve is having a problem in one tooth it's not going to affect the other teeth but it's not mm -hmm. going to affect mm -hmm. anything else so don't worry about that because it's not really it won't affect your chronic pain it won't affect it's just a it's an individual and you can always have a consultation with your dentist and then if you don't feel comfortable you can ask to be put with another dentist for the treatment yeah there you go thank you very much resident dentist we should do a whole video one day that's just people's dental questions. <laughs> no. I mean, you'd hate it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> All right, Hannah S. My dad learnt BSL in Scouts and remembers this. He wants lessons again, but is nervous. Any advice for him? Well, hello, Dolph. No, you can't have the chicken sausage. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's dinner time. I'm sorry, I'll answer faster. Um, but is nervous. Any advice for him? There are some really good, since at the start of lockdown, there's some really good BSL channels coming out. And I would absolutely advise that you follow uh, Jazzy Whips because she has, I know, a BSL course coming out kind of soonish. So I would follow her. And when she announces her course, where it's going to be and how you can get access to it, that's the one that you should sign up for. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Um, Tommy Santana. Have you seen Umbrella Academy? Yes, love it. Well, we've seen the first season. The next one is on our next things to watch because we've just finished watching The Sinner on Netflix. Very good, highly recommend. Felt a bit odd about the third season, but I feel like that's what they wanted us to feel. I'm wrapping up. Um, Dark Espresso, loved your vid on finding new cruelty-free vegan lipsticks. Have you made the switch or still looking? Yes, I've made the switch. My absolute favorite now is the Beauty Bakery uh, Lip Whip. Mine is called, um, well, it's in the video. Go back, the video will tell you. But the one I use in that video, um, if you just apply it, you have to apply it very quickly, one coat, you can't really go over it again, and it's a dream. 
it works really well. It looks good all day. Okay, and I would like to say thank you, and it's wonderful to have you to our new members, uh, Nathaniel Steele, Charlie Henderson Howard, and All Day, All Night Vines. No, All Night, All Day Vines. Sure. <laughs> thank you so much to everyone who sent in a question. Thank you to the new members. Thank you to all of you for joining us. I hope you have enjoyed this 750k celebratory live stream just as much as I've done. It's been really lovely to have you guys, and we shall see you very soon. Are you going to come and say goodbye? She's coming. She's coming. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. Thank you so much. Mwah, 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 mwah. Now we have to awkwardly like actually go and turn no, off. No, we're going to cook dinner. No, I will actually make you dinner, yes, darling. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> See, and now we stand here like. Bye. -bye. Bye, 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 -bye.